to this custom FPV racing quad build video. The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the components that go into a first person view racing drone and to take you through the steps step by step on how to assemble it and get it up and running for your first flight. Links to all of the components will be included in the description below. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here before me, I've got the two base components of the frame. This is the PDB or power distribution board, and here is our carbon fiber subframe. And right here is our Nase 32. It comes with these pins already soldered on here. Now on the PDB right here, as you can see, it's symmetric almost from side to side. The only difference here is that it's got a 12 volt and a five volt voltage regulator. On the sides here, we've got our pads for our battery our four pads for our ESC. So right now we're going to be connecting our NASA 32 to this board. We're going to need a couple of uh, nylon standoffs with their associated nylon nuts. And then I'm going to use some of the smaller screws that came with the ZMR250 to hold the NASA 32 to our standoffs. This is the back of our drone. So therefore I want my uh, micro USB cable to be sticking out the back. So to start with, let's put our standoffs on this guy. You just hand tighten these guys, you don't put any Loctite on them. Nylon is really important because it electrically isolates the board from anything. Okay, so we've got our four standoffs in there. Now remember that this is the back of our board, so we want our micro USB to be facing the back end like that. We're gonna be taking our shorter screws, these guys, and we're gonna be mounting it right inside of there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these guys down the rest of the way. You don't wanna to tighten too tight because we are tightening metal against plastic. So that right there is the installation of the Nase 32. As you can see, it sits off the board, so none of the pins touch the PDB in between here. And now I wanna put the standoffs in to this guy right here. So your ZMR250 frame comes with these standoffs. We've got two lengths of screws here. We're gonna be using these guys for the standoffs. So we need to grab the shorter ones. So we're going to be putting the standoffs into our PDB. So we've got holes along the perimeter of this guy. Now this rod is threaded on both ends because we're gonna have one of these screws going into both sides of it. So now we've got our uh, PDB with all of these standoffs in place. As you can see, they're all around the outside of this guy. Now we're going to be installing the arms into this frame. So this PDB sits on top of the subframe like this and the arms get sandwiched in between them. So we'll need our longer screws and then our locking nuts that come with them. There we go. If you put the head of the screw through the top like that. Arm has four screws, of course, as you can see. I'm gonna get every single one of them loosely tightened in here. Uh, because once you tighten them all the way down, you can't separate the subframe from the PDB to stick the arms in there. Okay, now let's go back through these guys and tighten some of them down. There is our drone frame. Okay, so we've got our frame with our NAS A32 and we've got our arms in there along with the subframe assembled. Now I want to attach the motors. So the motors actually come like this with three phase wires sticking out and the ends already clipped a little bit to expose the lead wires. So we've already done some bullet connector soldering on. These are two millimeter bullets and they've been soldered on to the tip of the, uh, we've, we've cut down the leads and we've soldered them on there. This piece goes on the top like this. So we've got two lengths of screws in here. We want to use the five millimeter ones, the shorter ones, to hold this top plate onto the motor. We're gonna grab our little bolt and we're gonna start screwing it in there. We're going from looking like this to looking like this. Now you've got something to screw onto the tip of the motor. We've got all four of our motors. Now we just need to attach them to the arms like so. We're going to be using our longer seven millimeter screws. So 
so then it sits like that. Lead wire is facing in towards the inside. And I've got all four screws in there. You wanna make sure that these things are relatively tight. But there we go, now we've got all four of our motors with all of our lead wires on there and they're facing inwards so we can connect them to the ESCs and then the ESCs to the NAS A32. Now I wanna get some power to the board so we can run some tests, make sure the motors work, make sure our ESCs work before we put them all in there. So what I'm going to be doing right now is attaching this XT60 connector to right here. So we wanna match up our, our negative with the negative on the board right here, which is on this side, and then our positive on this side. Both the pad and this guy have been pre-soldered. So that's the connection of our XT60 connector. As you can see here, it's on there, it's nice. It doesn't pull away, which is good. So the next thing we're going to do is attach our ESCs onto this guy right here. These are the ESCs that we've already done. As you can see, we've already got the, uh, the bullet connectors. These bullet connectors go into these bullet connectors. We've got our positive and negative that need to be attached right here. The negative lead and then we're going to do the positive lead. Okay, there we go. It looks totally crazy now, but that's just because we've got our control wires sprayed out everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and connect those. Remember, this is the back of our quadricopter and this is the front of our quadricopter. That means this is motor one, two, three, four. And the way this is oriented here is we have one, two, three, and four. Right up at the front here, we've got ground, voltage, and, and six. This is signal. If we take a look at this guy, We've got our yellow, red, and brown. Brown is ground, so you want brown to go to the far outside of this. Just like that, this is motor number one. This is motor number two. This is motor number three. And here's motor number four. And then we've got to connect our the phase wires from the ESC to the phase wires here. And I've got them all already color-coded, but since I've switched around the motors and the ESCs, they might be a little bit different. But we're gonna go ahead and plug them in. Now, the only thing that dictates the, the rotational direction of the motors is these phase wiring. So if you switch these phases right here, the motor will spin the opposite direction. So you just need to switch two phase wires in order to switch the rotation, the rotational direction of the motor. Now we're gonna plug in our NAS A32 into our computer so that we can program it. Right here, I've got a Macintosh. So we need a micro USB and we're gonna plug it into the NAS A32. And then we're gonna plug the other end into our computer. But before we do that, we need to type into Google Scilabs Mac OS X, for example. And this is the USB to UART bridge converter. This will allow us to communicate with the NAS A32. So once you come here, then you go down to whichever operating system you're using, in this case, Macintosh, and then you download it and then you're going to run it. Now, Blink Flight is a Google Chrome extension. If you don't already have it installed, you can get it by going to Chrome, Googling Clean Flight Configurator, and it will be one of the first options. It's a Chrome extension. So you'll add it, and once you get this application, you can go over to your apps up here in Google Chrome. So you click on Clean Flight, and it's going to open it for us. So this is the Clean Flight interface. So now we're going to plug our NAS A32 into our computer and we go to this firmware flasher. So first we need to choose our firmware. For our firmware for our board, look for the most recent version of uh, the NAS A clean plate all the way up here at the top, as you can see here. So we're going to click on that. And then we're gonna go down here. We're gonna leave all of these defaults as is. It's giving us some warnings to make sure that we know what's going on. And then we're gonna go down here and we're going to load firmware online. That means we're gonna download it from the internet. After we've loaded the firmware from online, then we're gonna flash the firmware. We just wanna flash the NAS A32. So this is basically just updating the code that's running on this tiny computer right here to make sure that it's up to date. At the base here, we can see that it's been programmed successfully. So now we can go up here to our, our connection and we can look for our connection. If you don't see it here, it's right here, it's this USB to UART one. But if you don't see it here, then you can always turn on auto connect, unplug and replug in your board. But we can just auto connect like that. So we've got the most recent firmware and we can see that it's it's just fine here. Right now we just wanna make sure that our motors are working properly. So if we get under our motor tab right here, it gives us a diagram of how the motors should spin and what their number is. So this is motor number one, two, three, and four. Opposite motors spin the same directions. So one and four are spinning clockwise. Two and three are spinning counterclockwise. 
we need to attach the battery. That's why we already started the XD60. It does a cute little sing-songy introduction, and now we've got power. You definitely do not want your propellers on when you're doing this. So we've clicked the understand. Now we're going to be slowly raising the master. This will allow the motors to spin up. You don't want to go full ham, otherwise it'll totally spin up really fast. All right there, okay. So now we've got the motors just spinning right here. You can hear their bearings whirring away. Now what you want to do is you want to test to make sure they're spinning in the correct direction. So remember, motor number one, this guy down here, needs to be spinning this direction. It needs to be spinning clockwise. So you can kind of put your finger against it and feel which direction it's moving. It makes it a little bit easier to feel. Number two, it needs to be going counterclockwise. So it is indeed spinning this direction. Number three, it needs to be going counterclockwise. Yep, same direction. And number four, it needs to be going clockwise. Yep, same direction. So now we go ahead and turn those motors off. Okay, I just wanna clean up this mess of wires that is right here. So I'm just gonna take some black tape and I'm just gonna run it along the underside. So I wanna make sure that they're, that they're not exposed. Now let's clean up these control wires. So all we have to remember is which motor is which and that it counts up from one, two, three from the bottom here. There we go, and now we've got a beautifully cleaned up drone. We need to connect our receiver with our transmitter. So this guy right here, we've got a couple things down the line here. We've got our battery, our channels, and then over here it shows us that signal is on the far left. Our positive rail is in the middle rail, and the negative is on the far right right there. So the way that this guy gets power is it goes through a jumper from this positive rail to over here. So this battery one is also the bind one. So we're just gonna plug this into channel one and we're gonna plug this guy over here into channel one, all the way up here. We wanna make sure that our signal, that ground matches with ground. So ground is on the far left, which means we need to plug it in like that. So that ground going over to ground, positive to positive. Now we need to plug in our bind wire, which is this guy. It comes with our receiver and we need to put it in the top rail which is the bind rail or the battery rail. So we have this, when we do this, it's going to put it into binding mode. And see here we've got the, the flashing light right here that shows that it's in binding mode. So now we're gonna take our Turnagy 9X. On the back here, we've got a button that's called the bind range test. So we're gonna press that in and while it's being pressed in, we're gonna turn the thing over and we're gonna turn it on. And that should bind pretty quick. And you'll know that it's bound when this light turns solid. So this light's now solid, which means that this receiver with this transmitter are now bound. So they talk to each other, regardless of how many receivers and transmitters you have in the area. Okay, so the way this works is like this. This goes channel one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to eight. This only has six channels. The extra two channels are unnecessary. We're not gonna use them. This right here, as you can see, on this thing right here are signals on the far left, so we're gonna use yellow as signal, like this. So I'm gonna turn it into, plug it into channel one first and foremost. So channel one's gonna go all the way up here to the signal of this channel, which is this one to the far left. So that goes into right there. Now the rest of these wires only have one wire on them, and that's because they just need to connect the signal wire of this guy right here, the signal pin, which is the inside one, to the signal pin over here. This guy right there, and this guy is channel three, so it goes to the next slot down. All right, so now we've got all of our all of our channel wires in there, and we've got our, our receiver right there. So now what we can do is we can run a test. Let's plug our battery back in. And see, this thing is bound with this guy when there's a green line right here. So this thing has a fail safe so that it doesn't bind immediately. You have to hold this to the right, and now it's bound. You see there how it's got the green light? Now, if we turn this up, it'll start turning. Now, I'd like to clean up this wire mess right here that was caused by a, by a receiver. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. The next thing I wanna do is, this guy's gonna be hanging off the edge here, and the danger with that is that it can go into the props if you crash. We're taking a really long zip tie, a really big, long zip tie, and we've got these cutouts in the back here. We're gonna be sticking this zip tie through here, and I'm gonna be zip tying it so that this zip tie will stick out the back end. Our uh, receiver's gonna sit right here, but before we put that down, We've got a bunch of exposed leads here. Put some black tape over those pads. 
Like I said before, electrical tape is your friend. Now this guy's gonna go back right here and we're gonna have it facing directly backwards. Now, and to hold it in place though, I'm gonna use some more zip ties. We're gonna attach it onto this guy like this and I'm just gonna tape it on there. If you have heat shrink, heat shrink works as well. So this is our transmitter uh, and, and this is our camera. This is our wire. This is the wire they're gonna be using to attach it. We're going to mount it just like that. So it sits up on this little black piece of plastic right here. And that'll give us enough of an angle that it's more comfortable while we're flying. I'm gonna feed these guys in through the back of the camera. It's really annoying when you're flying and the camera looks like it's shaking or vibrating. It, it kind of looks like a mirage on a desert actually. It just lines running through your frame, it's weird. The bottom of our, our uh, camera is this guy right here. We want the top part of this drone to be resting against this, this plastic piece. That's the rough setup of the, of the camera right there though. This three pin connector goes into the camera. The six pin connector over here goes into our transmitter. Now this guy runs off of our battery 12 volt power. So we're gonna be using these pads right here. We're gonna need to kind of rig something up so our transmitter will stand upright and I'm gonna screw it in place. Have your board under strain instead the strain will be put on this on the the antennas connector right there okay now a few final things to do before we're ready to fly and the first thing is to put on our propellers so we've got four propellers here clockwise and counterclockwise so this blade right here is a clockwise blade and that's because the leading edge the upper edge goes into the wind like this. So this is a counterclockwise blade and this is a clockwise blade. So the thing you need to know is that the, which motor, which blades go on which motor. So this is motor one and motor one spins clockwise. So we need a clockwise motor like this. Motor two spins counterclockwise or opposite motor two. So we need a counterclockwise blade. Same thing with motor three. Motor three and motor two are the same because they're opposites. So they're both counterclockwise. Motor one and motor four are both clockwise. So you can tell like as the motor spins clockwise is the leading edge or the rising edge going into the wind. You only wanna put these nuts on motor one and motor two. And that's because as motor one and two spin, it'll tighten the nut. On the other hand, motor two and motor three, since it's been counterclockwise, it'll loosen the nuts. So you'll just end up losing your nuts that come with them. A way to get around that is to use zip ties and zip ties are your friends always and forever. You run the zip tie in between two of these metal pieces and above the the copper wires. So you run them like that. And then you want to zip tie on the other side as well, like this. And then you'll just zip tie the, the blades on there. Our battery's gonna be sitting on the back here. So we're gonna add some foam so that our battery can be compressed against the foam and not the, not the hard carbon fiber. And then our battery will sit on top like this. And then now because we've got the rubber underneath here, we can cinch this guy on here so that it holds our battery in place. Plug our battery in. And you'll know right away if there was a short or not. And this is where our little voltage monitor comes in. So uh, we're gonna plug it into our voltage monitor, negative to the negative side, and uh, you can check to see if it's set to the right cutoff. I typically do 3.6. I typically Velcro this guy on here and that'll alarm when it's, when it's gonna go bad. And uh, we're basically ready to fly. So let's go give it a test.